Hi and hello, this is Munisha Khatwani and you can catch me on www.ratshree.com. I am a Mumbai based tarot card reader and an astrologer and now I am going to be telling you about the 22 most important cards in tarot. Where say tarot to 78 cards ka hota hai, that is tarot consists of 78 cards and it's divided in two sections. 22 cards which consist of major arcana and 56 cards which consist of minor arcana. Minor arcana is further divided into four suits which is pages, wands, swords and cups. Apart from which there are court cards, there are aces and there are pages. So this consists of a whole deck. Minor arcana, now minor cards are day to day cards, cards that are more relevant in your day to day life and they could last just for a day or for a couple of days. But major arcana as the name suggests major have a major impact in your life and have a major and long lasting effect in your life. So chances are if you get a major arcana it will last longer for you than what a minor arcana would. So let's start and see what are the 22 major arcana cards. We're starting with card number 0 because in tarot there is a number 0 not number 1. So with number 0 we have the card known as the fool. Now the fool is one of the most important cards in tarot because the fool basically indicates a risk taker, a great gambler, somebody who's uh, very carefree and somebody who doesn't look before they leap. They just like to taste grist and believe in the leap of faith. So the fool indicates a lot of that. The fool also could mean do not take too many risks as far as your health is concerned. Now we're going to move on to card number two. And card number two is the card of the magician. That's right. The magician, well, actually it's card number one in terms of numeric numbers, but actually in sequence it's card number two. So the magician ideally means the, the power of magic. As far as your confidence level goes, the magician is a very, very important card. It generally means manifestation, confidence, having faith in your abilities, like performing magic. It's almost like when you go to a magic show and you watch a magician perform its magic, you're completely mesmerized by his tricks and the same thing with the magician it means your performance is absolutely magical or it means that you have the magic to create whatever energy you want in your hand so the magician actually indicates magic in your life The third card we have is the card of the High Priestess which actually in sequence is card number 2 and it is basically a card of prayer because the High Priestess is a card of prayer, it's a card of spirituality, it's a card consisting of occult, of tarot, of astrology. So you've got the High Priestess which indicates a lot of knowledge, it indicates a lot of deep thought, it in indicates a lot of spirituality. If you can see the card has a lot of meanings but the basic main meaning about this card is to do with spirituality, occult. Somebody who's a psychiatrist would represent this. Something to do with your mind, something to do with spirituality, something to do with prayer, something to do with the mysteries of life, like they say, the occult or the sciences of life. Then card number three, known as the Empress. Now the Empress, as we say, is the Lakshmi card or the card of all abundances, the card of all happiness, especially material wealth, financial wealth, materialistic gains. And for women, this is a very important card as far as pregnancy and children are concerned because the Empress indicates a woman getting pregnant or a woman who is pregnant or a woman who can bear children or who will be bearing children soon. Apart from which, the Empress also indicates very good aspects as far as your love life is concern. It means you'll be like an empress in your love life. For females and for males, it means a very, very happy and satisfying love life. Then we have the card of the emperor, card number four. So the emperor means somebody who is willing to take control, willing to take charge, willing to be very, very strong and authoritative. So the emperor actually signifies authority, it signifies confidence, it signifies having a lot of faith and it signifies a lot of discipline. The emperor also means some elderly figure in your life. So it could be your father, it could be your uncle, but chances are it will be a male or it's likely to be a male who has a very strong control over your life. Now we move on to card number 5 
the Hierophant. Well, the Hierophant signifies commitment. This card, if you can see, is almost like a priest getting you married. So this card is all to do about marriage, commitment, engagement, wedding plans. Uh, you know, the Hierophant indicates ceremonies taking place. And basically, it is the card of commitment. So when somebody asks you, how well do you think my boyfriend will be committed to me and the Hierophant comes, chances are you land up marrying that person. This is just a random example. But basically, the Hierophant signifies commitment of any sort, mostly to do with with your personal life but can also signify commitment as far as your emotional life is concerned professional life is concerned or your health is concerned Now we move on to card number six. It is known as the lovers and as the card indicates, it basically connects with your love life. Romance, as far as the opposite, you can see there is a male and a female, so opposites attract. And of course, there's an archangel over here. So the card basically indicates with your love life, your romantic life, marriage plans, relationship plans, meeting a new life partner, chemistry, good energy. So the, the lovers basically signifies all of that. Everything to do with your love life, everything to do with your romantic uh, life, your romantic liaisons and also the lovers could be as far as your profession is concerned that you are very much in love with your profession or you really have a very strong passion for it. So basically the lover signifies all of this. And now we move on to card number seven. It is the card of the chariot. Well, the chariot indicates a lot of professional success. The chariot is also known as the Arjun card because this is the card of focus and dedication and duty. This is the card of duty and responsibility. In the Mahabharat, Arjun performed his responsibility. He performed his duty towards his family or whatever his karmic duties were. Again, the chariot indicates a lot of duty, a lot of uh, focus as far as career and personal matters are concerned, family responsibility personal and professional success apart from which taking the good and the bad that is the black and the white in your life with all stride and accepting what your karma has brought you to be so the chariot is a very good card for work and professional matters now we move on to card number eight with strength. Now this is known as the Durga card as this signifies strength. The card itself has the meaning in itself. If you can see there's a lady trying to tame her animal nature, trying to be very strong. So this indicates mental, emotional or physical strength. And now we move on to card number nine, which is the card of the hermit. Now the hermit specifically means deep thought, introspection, thinking and really making each decision. The hermit also means looking deep within. It could also mean moving towards some spiritual guidance or taking some advice from some elderly person. Now we move on to card number 10. It is the card of Wheel of Fortune. And as the card suggests, it's a very auspicious card because fortune obviously means good luck. So the Wheel of Fortune means everything good happening in your life. Planets moving in your favor, stars moving in your favor, the wheel spinning the exact way it should in your life, destiny favoring you and destiny happening to you the way you want and good luck. So the Wheel of Fortune is a very, very auspicious and good luck card. Now we move on to card number 11, justice. Justice means literally justice. For example, it could be that you need justice in your life or it could be that you could be getting justice in your life, whether in legal matters, emotional matters or otherwise. This card is also a card of karma. So as you sow, you shall reap. This is exactly what the card says. And justice follows the law of nature, which is do good and you will receive good. Apart from which, justice says if God fulfills your wishes, then he's definitely giving you justice. And if he doesn't, then that is his justice towards you that you do not deserve this at the moment right now and when you will deserve it, you will get it automatically. This is what justice signifies. And now we move on to card number 12, the hanged man. The hanged man means a lot of sacrifices. As you can see, the picture is that he's gone completely upside down. So he's completely surrendered to God, to destiny and to his life and sacrifice. The hanged man also indicates sacrifice towards family or friends. Plus the hanged man could indicate something about your past coming back into your life. Now we have card number 13 known as death. A lot of people feel very scared when this card appears but this card doesn't literally mean death. It means transformation and change happening in your life. Only when death happens can birth happen again and vice versa. This is the law of nature and death signifies just that. If you can see there's a sun coming out of the card which just specifically means, specifically means that there will be something new, something better coming up. It could be death of a bad phase, ending of a bad phase but death when it comes for health matters is obviously not very positive so you need to take care of your health. 
Now we have card number 14 which is known as temperance. Temperance means balance essentially. If you can see one foot is in the water, one foot is on land and that is what you call balance. So temperance indicates personal and professional balance along with maybe friendship or making new friends. This is the basic meaning of the card. Now we have card number 15 known as the devil and as the card suggests and as the card looks it is a slightly negative card it's basically a card of bondages oppression things being stuck up negative planets a lot of delays or blocks happening in your life so when the devil comes it's basically chaining you down it's not allowing you to move further in your life and that's why this card is slightly considered negative but the devil also means the blockages and bondages could be moved away whether through planets or whether personally so that if you have put your own bondages on you or if you put your own you know attachments towards yourself you've tied yourself down then maybe you need to break free this is exactly what the card suggests now we have card number 16 the tower and as the card suggests it is a lot of chaos and you can see there's a lot of confusion and this is exactly what the card means chaos confusion disruption accidents negative news problems breakthroughs um, things that you are not expecting unexpected bad news this is exactly what the tower suggests arguments problems and the tower is usually considered a negative card and it is also against what you want so that's why the tower is slightly negative now we have card number 17 known as the star. After two negative cards, we move on to a more positive aspect. The star means, of course, stars literally themselves. That is the planets, the stars, your destiny, everything. And the star also means hope joy happiness things moving stars being in your favor things changing for the better and a lot of success coming your way. Now we have card number 18, the moon and as the card suggests, the moon is on it. So the moon is causing a lot of disturbance, it's causing a lot of problems, it's causing a lot of blockages and your mind is very, very disturbed because of the moon. So the moon suggests blockages, disturbances, mental tension, financial delays or maybe some hallucination, imaginations which not necessarily might be true. But the moon generally indicates two dogs barking which means your mind will be continuously thinking like two dogs that continuously bark. So this is the specific meaning of the moon. Now we have card number 19, the sun. Now the sun, as it suggests, is a very bright and happy card. This is the card of all sorts of prosperity, whether personal, professional, health-wise, financially, this is one of the best cards in the major arcana. In fact, probably the top card in the major arcana. The sun indicates everything happening the way you want, any wish fulfillment, any success, professionally rising to the top and all sorts of happiness in life. Now we have card number 20 known as judgment. Now judgment means basically using your judgment accurately, not rushing into any decision. Judgment also means very being patient, holding on before creating any decision. And judgment means realization. It means it could be some sort of realization, waking up from a deep sleep or some sort of change that's happening for the positive in your life. And now we move on to the last card that is card number 21 which is the world and the world as it signifies means foreign travel, overseas travel, traveling around the world and of course it means having every happiness because when you have everything you say wow I've got the world this is exactly what the card means and the world signifies also a lot of foreign connections and it could also mean traveling abroad like I said apart from which it could be meaning working abroad and it could also mean finding a job abroad anything related to overseas connections. It also means a lot of personal life happiness. So I hope you enjoyed learning and watching all about the 22 major arcana cards in the tarot deck. In case of any other queries, please do write in to me at munisha at I'll be awaiting for your response.